On Sunday night, the Los Angeles Lakers wrapped up this long and grueling season with a championship, a storybook ending for LeBron, AD, and the Lakers organization. And now that the season is over, I wanted to take a deep dive into something that has been circulating over the last few days. This championship being one of the easiest to win in recent years. Not only did I crunch the numbers to find out if there was any truth to this claim, the result that I got is one you have to see to believe. With LeBron claiming his fourth ring, the tone among NBA fans hasn't changed much. Some people love to see it, others don't. This was about as predictable as it gets, hence the title of my last video. With many NBA fans saying this season was so different and unconventional that this particular championship should have an asterisk next to it. Or as some call it, the Mickey Mouse Rec League Championship. But looking at this from an objective point of view, where does this championship run rank all time in terms of difficulty? What championship team had the hardest run to a title and which championship team had the easiest run? Well, I started this search for the ultimate championship run and quickly came across this Reddit post from four years ago. This Reddit user came up with a simple way of measuring the difficulty of a team's title run by using an advanced stat called the Simple Rating System, or SRS. This stat measures a team's margin of victory throughout the season adjusted for strength of schedule. Basically, this stat quantifies how good a team is. For example, this season the Bucks had the highest SRS in the entire league of 9.41, followed by the Clippers, Lakers, and Raptors. Just like any other stat, it has its flaws, but overall it's a great indicator of how great, or terrible, a team is. He then added up the total SRS values for every team that each championship team beat in the playoffs. For example, in 2017, the Warriors beat the Blazers, Jazz, Spurs, and Cavaliers. Add up the SRS scores for each of those teams and the difficulty of the Warriors 2017 championship run is 13.77. So now that we understand how this all works, here is the list of championship runs ranked in terms of difficulty. With the 1995 Rockets having the most difficult path to a championship and the 1987 Lakers having the easiest path to a championship. This list only includes championships dating back to the 1984 season since that is when the 16-team playoff system was introduced. So with the last 37 championship teams listed, where do the 2020 Lakers land? All the way down at 35th. In the last 37 seasons, only two championship teams faced easier competition than the Lakers faced in this season's playoffs. In my last video, I talked about how the Lakers' path to a title this season was no easier than any other championship teams. And I literally could not have been more wrong. Not only was their path easy, it was nearly the easiest path of the last 37 seasons. But let's take a deeper look into some of these numbers. The first thing that jumped out at me was that the Shaq and Kobe Lakers three-peat featured three of the top five most difficult paths to a championship. That is unbelievable. And even crazier is that in 2001, the Lakers nearly swept the playoffs, going 15-1 while facing the second most difficult opponents in the process. So if you've ever wondered what team was the most dominant in the last 35 seasons, I think there is your answer. Now, if we highlight each decade, then we can see which 10-year span featured the most difficult runs to a championship. And for the most part, each decade had similar levels of difficulty, except the 80s. But this was because for most of the 80s, the league only had 23 teams, which meant a 16-team playoff format featured many teams with losing records. Simply put, the league was still good, but it was super top-heavy with bad teams making the playoffs. With that being said, it's still shocking just how easy it was to get deep into the playoffs in the 80s. So, you know how the NBA has been a bit one-sided throughout recent history in terms of talent level in each conference? Well, this next graphic highlights just that. When graphing the most difficult paths to a championship using SRS scores on the y-axis, you can see that the West has won four of the five toughest championships since 1984. The West has also won 12 of the 20 most difficult titles in the last 37 seasons. Four of those eight titles from the East coming at the hands of Michael Jordan and the Bulls. Here are Michael Jordan's six titles. Here are Kobe's five championships. Every single one of them having a very high degree of difficulty. And here 
are LeBron's four championships. Now, strictly considering how challenging each of these championship runs were, which collection of championships looks more impressive? At face value, Kobe's rings are easily the greatest collection of tough titles in the modern NBA. Now consider the fact that Mike and LeBron received finals MVP in every one of their championship seasons, and Kobe won the award just two out of five times. And for some more reference, here are Magic Johnson's last three championships. I've said it before and I cannot stress this enough. Not every championship is built the same. And when you start considering other variables like who did they play with, was there any significant injuries, and how well did they play in the finals, you begin to see just how ridiculous it is to base the foundation of your GOAT debate on purely how many rings a player has. Most would agree that five rings beats four, but what if the five rings were won on a relatively easy path while the four were won on a more difficult path? And before we move on, I just want to point out that this era of the NBA, the 90s and early 2000s, was easily the most competitive time in basketball. Just something to think about. So after seeing just how different each title run can be, one surprising aspect of this experiment that jumped out at me was the fact that the best two teams don't always end up in the finals. In fact, rarely do the best two teams end up in the finals. For example, in the 2001 playoffs, the Lakers faced off against the 76ers in the finals. This was possibly the biggest finals mismatch in recent history, but NBA fans knew this at the time. However, just how big of a mismatch this was is absurd. On their path to the finals, the Lakers beat the Blazers, the Kings, and the Spurs. All of these teams had a higher SRS score than the 76ers. Of course, this is a rather simple metric to grade how good a team is, but it is not a stretch to say that the Lakers faced better teams at every stage leading up to the finals than they did in the finals. In 2018, the Warriors beat the Spurs, the Pelicans, and the Rockets on their way to the finals to face the Cavs, each of these Western Conference teams being statistically better than the Cavaliers. So think to yourself, how many players and teams have been eliminated before the finals that could have made the finals if they were just in a different conference? How many NBA championships were decided in the Western Conference? This is why, although I'm a certified LeBron fanboy, I don't put as much weight into his 10 finals appearances as other fans. I have to consider the fact that during those finals runs, the East was considerably worse than the West, and if LeBron and the Cavs were in the West, they may not have even saw the finals. So just how easy was the Lakers' path to a championship this season? Quite frankly, it was historically easy. But the craziest part about all of this is that in 20 years, no one will care about the details. Just like how no one cares that three of Magic's five rings were won on easy paths. Just like how the 99 Spurs snagged a relatively easy ring during the most difficult era of the NBA. Just like how MJ's path to his first two rings were immensely easier than the path to his last four. It doesn't matter because it doesn't change anything. Regardless of how you get it, a ring is still a ring. And although they aren't all built the same, they all shine just as bright. Hope you all enjoyed, and as always, until next time.